on night hacking session at Java 1. Cut. Java 1? <laughs> Java Land. <laughs> I've been traveling. I'm exhausted. Starting broadcast. There we go, it's working. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, Java Land. Hello, people in night hacking. Um, we're here. This is the first day of uh, we're here. The first day of Java Land, and with me, joining me on stage on the night hacking stage is Oleg Shlaev. Oleg, how's it going? Hello, it's going pretty good. And what it's do you what do you think of Java Land the conference? Java Land the conference is pretty amazing. Uh, it's really busy. There are I think seventeen hundred people attendees here, so it's all buzzing with people. There are tons of sessions. The location is. Uh, a double-edged sword, so it's a very cool amusement park, which is not a typical location for a Java conference. Mm -hmm. So the outside, you can see all those rides and like fountains and like carousels and uh, all that amusement stuff. But at the same time, it is uh, due to the location; it cannot be like in the middle of a reasonably large city. Mm -hmm. So getting here involves involves flying, taking trains, using donkeys, taxis, and all that stuff. But once you are here, you don't want to leave. This yeah. is the thing. And tell us a little bit about yourself. I'll put this on. Uh, I'll put this on screen. This seems to be your. Uh, almost looks like a kind of business card. There we go. It is. Uh, it so who are you then, Alec? Uh I work as a developer advocate for Zero Turnaround, which is a software company that does tools for Java developers. And as a developer advocate, my main responsibility is to care about community, educate. Uh, developers about recent advancement in the technology, both our product-wise and like just in general. Mm -hmm. So to advocate for good technology and for using the right tools for the right problems. And one of the main activities that I do is uh, maintaining the blog, that Zero Tolerance blog called Rebel Apps, which is a uh, a cool outlet where we try to publish uh, really technical content, like all, all kinds of things, Java-related, software engineering-related, uh, team-leading-related, all kinds of that. So uh, if you're interested, I would be happy if you check it out. You just like Google that, and it, it will come right up. I'm also co-leading with you a virtual jug, which is an online-only Java user group, which makes it special, because you can join virtual jug from virtually everywhere. Mm -hmm. Literally everywhere, where you have the connection, and you can enjoy technical sessions like once, twice a month uh, from the comfort of your home. So if you are a person who learns the best uh, at home, then that is the perfect opportunity for you to to join and be a part of the community. So you know that how people say that the best thinking time is in the shower. <laughs> if you have a, a device that is waterproof, you can join that. You can join the virtual jack sessions from the shower, and you're uh, you're very brave to put your phone number up. So let's see if anyone uh, let's see if anyone calls during during this interview. Yeah. Uh, so what are you going to be talking about t today? What are you going to be what are you going to be sharing? Um, I, th I thought it's an interview where I would be prepared to answer all the okay, interesting questions. Let me let me ask you an interesting <laughs> question. What are you going to be speaking at at Java Java Land this uh, this time around? Oh. Yeah, I have two sessions. One is a joint session with a reasonably minor celebrity uh, <laughs> Java champion guy called Simon Maple. And we're going to talk about uh, Java, Java 9. So the whole session, there were plenty of sessions about Java 9 and what's coming. But we know that like around the next corner, we'll get the release. It will be the new default Java version. And people will need to start migrating. Mm -hmm. So in this session, we're going to try to look at the main features in Java 9 and from the point of a developer. So what should get you excited about Java 9? What you should consider more important or less important? And how you would like to uh, maybe migrate? Or would you like to migrate? Would you like to postpone that or, or anything? So. All kinds. We will touch on the modules, but not that much. And we will concentrate on other things that went into Java 9, from the API improvements to uh, how would you like to uh, prepare for the new 
uh, for the G1 uh, garbage collector being the default to minor things like, I don't know, HTTP to client, and do you actually need that? And so you're going to be looking at the pros and cons? Yeah, mostly. And it's, gonna, so it's basically going to be an argument. It will be. So uh, there will be, like, that's the whole idea of having two speakers on stage, because with a normal presentation where you just, like, prove one point or just, like, show the light uh, on, on the problem from one side, you just, you don't need two speakers on stage. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do with two speakers is to have an argument. So for every feature that is upcoming, there are good things about that and bad things about that. So, and since we have very different opinion, opinions on what is the uh, normal workflow or what are the problems that Java developers do solve day to day and what they should get excited about, I think it would be very interesting to, to defend uh, different point of views on what's in the Java 9. Okay, sounds cool. And that's tomorrow. I'm going to crush you. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, so let's talk about uh, something that's new in Rebel Labs, uh, Web Framework Index. Yeah. Uh, what is the Web Frameworks Index? Uh, show, uh, show yeah, I can, I can show it. So recently, uh, coming into 2017, what we, what we decided to do, we decided to start a new project uh, at Rebel Labs, and we call it Java Web Frameworks Index, or just the Web Frameworks Index, because everyone knows Java just rules in the web applications. So what we did, we gathered data and stats from some public services all over the internet about the usages and popularity of certain uh, web frameworks. And we gathered the list and we built a rating. Mm -hmm. And uh, the result, let me show you the result first. So the result is basically just a single number uh, which roughly corresponds to an, a projection of a market share for the framework. So we analyze, we analyze uh, LinkedIn, GitHub, Google, Search, and what else? Something else. We analyze something else. Let me just figure out. GitHub, LinkedIn, Stack Overflow. So we analyze those services where people actually uh, discuss and, and talk about or and show what technologies they're using. And based on the popularity and frequency of mentioning certain technologies uh, in those, on those services, we can gather the stats, normalize that, process that, and show you a number. So this is not an, an absolute number. So this is a relative to you what data and what, what uh, stats we get for all the other frameworks. Mm -hmm. But it, it is an indicator of how much the internet mentions certain things. And in the first edition that we run in February, we got 10 frameworks, which was a little bit unlucky because people thought that we really wanted to make 10. Aren't Spring MVC, Spring Boot, and Hi J Hipster, aren't they the same thing? That's a good question. This is one of the most frequently asked questions about the Web Framework Index. They're not. So from the technology point of view, they're all backed by, by Spring. And if you are building web applications with Spring currently, you will be using Spring MVC as a framework. So that was the argument that people came back to us and asked a lot of time, like, why, why do you separate those entries in mm -hmm. the index? However, uh, there is a very clear separation from what is a web framework when you're looking from the inside as the maintainer of a certain library of a framework and when you're looking on, on that from the outside. So we, we, we run those surveys every year and we, where we ask Java developers about all kinds of choices they do about the technology. And one of the questions uh, historically has been what web frameworks are you using? And people respond to that with saying, like, oh, I'm using Spring Boot. And they refer to that as the web framework. Or they're saying, oh, I actually use jhipster, even though technically it's just a generator for the Spring Boot project. They refer to that as a web framework mm -hmm. they're using. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided to put them in. And that's how 
we see this index would be the most reasonable and useful. And do you have the results for this next month then? Yeah, I do. I do. So we run we run the I information gathering again. And it's not published yet, so here's a sneak peek for the results for the upcoming months. Uh, and there are a couple of things to notice. First, we added a bunch of frameworks that were were not previously in the index. So now, now there are 17 entries. The direct consequence of that is that the numbers got a little bit lower because there, there were just more entries. So the relative market share from all the numbers, you can see that it still adds up to 100 here. But since we have more things, some numbers went down. However, it wasn't significant, a significant drop for any of those frameworks. Uh, so Spring MVC will still be the leader of the Web Framework Index this month. One noticeable trend is that Spring Boot has overcome the GWT. Mm -hmm. Not by a lot, but and they weren't that far away from each other last month. But still, uh, Spring Boot is now number three. If you are a really hardcore fan of Spring MVC and you think that we shouldn't separate those entries, you can just add those two numbers together and be happy about that. Uh, but as of now, we have Spring Boot on the podium. And while you'd expect numbers to fall then between February and March, because you have two different, uh, a different number of uh, frameworks, Drop Wizard and J Hipster seems to have increased quite significantly. Yeah. P specifically Drop Wizard, actually. Right? Drop Wizard is, uh, is uh, has done fantastic in this month. So let me talk a little bit about how we do the stats, how we gather the stats. So we use the number of tagged questions on Stack Overflow, and this is the absolute, the absolute number, uh, and it just always grows. So if Stack Overflow wouldn't lose their database or they wouldn't massively delete questions, this number is monotonically increasing. We did the LinkedIn mentions, which is also probably will be just steadily increasing over time for all the frameworks. We do the number of GitHub searches in the repositories for the framework artifacts. So we take just literally the name of the main framework artifact and find them in Maven Palms and Gradle, uh, Gradle build files. Mm -hmm. So how many times they're referred on GitHub, which is uh, a significant number. And then for the Google search, this is one, one interesting bit. For the Google search, we do the number of returned results for the query framework name, web framework, uh, to separate from all the weird uh, non-framework related results. If you just Google for Spring Boot, you get a lot of shoes hmm. for Spring the season. Uh, so we, we Google that and we take the number of results for the past months. So this indicates mostly just the number of uh, recent entries in the World Wide Web for the particular framework name, which is good because that could influence the modern, the modern stats. So if a framework got a release and is going through the hype cycle, or it is just like getting very a lot of exposure somehow, I don't know, uh, a spring one conference and people are mentioning that, and that is popular, Google search will reflect that more than or other sources. Or release services. time or anything like that. A release time would be good, or if any, any, any major uh, events around the framework are happening. So Google search will reflect that the most, and we think of it internally a little bit of a hype factor, which is the popularity measure, so it belongs in the our web and framework and index. By popularity there, you're meaning it in, as in terms of how many people use it, how many people have skills in it, rather than whether people actually like it, whether it's popular among developers. Popular in terms of usage rather than e their opinion on it. Ex exactly. So we, we, we don't gather any stats on, on how likable those frameworks are or how, how well uh, developers are, uh, well, how much they like using it. Mm. So if somebody uses something terrible and gets 
paid a lot of for that, it wouldn't reflect on the index. Okay. So, and we also, unfortunately, we cannot, you cannot take this index and kind of convert that to the number of the project, projects people are using frameworks in, uh, which would be the ultimate measure of the popularity in a sense, how much the framework is used, but that data is impossible to gather. So the, those projects are typically closed source, they sit somewhere on your private repositories, and there is just no way to gather the stats. Mm -hmm. We thought quite a bit of gathering some data from the Maven Central or Bintray, just to see how much the artifacts are being downloaded. But those, those services just give this data for the maintainer. Mm. So if you're not, if you're not a, I don't know, a rat pack maintainer, then, then you won't see the, the stats for that. Okay. And when, when I'm going to see this data, this, uh, the, the current month's data then, is that the going to come out soon? The current month's data will gonna, uh, come out in the current months, mm -hmm. in March. So we, we gather the data, try to follow the cadence of one month. So we gather it around the 15th of every month. But we, we are sorting out the last issues with the publishing. We want to make a, a graph and the images for, uh, for, for this index pretty. So you can reasonably expect to look at it and you wouldn't be ashamed to share that. Mm -hmm. So the latest notes that I have is that we are scheduling to publish this today. Okay, cool. And where would people go to see that then? Is there a... Uh, yeah, so you just Google Rebel Apps Web Framework Index and there is a, the home page for, for that will be the static URL I cannot type, but I think it's the web framework index .com, like that. And it will get you to the home page where you will see the data. Awesome, and that's, so that's going to be a monthly thing from here on, very similar to the TAB index for, uh, for languages. Yeah, exactly. Like this is the perfect uh, analog of what we are trying to do. Mm -hmm. So the TOB index uh, operates on Google search results only, and it is for programming languages. Uh, we are taking a little bit different approach, uh, but this is very similar to the TOB index. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, Oleg, pleasure chatting to you, and uh, have a great uh, Java land. And uh, there's going to be, on Night Hacking and on Periscope, there's going to be some, uh, a whole bunch of uh, different interviews happening at, uh, at Java Land, so do, do, do look out for that. We're also going to be running a VJUG session live from, uh, live from Java Land, which is happening at 3 p.m. today, German time. What's that's that? like in that's, that's in 90 minutes. In 90 minutes, that quick. Okay, in 90 minutes, we're going we're gonna to have a session on uh, Jenkins 2. Uh, so do, do check that out, um, and that's with uh, Bert, Bert Jan Schreiber. Um, so, so yeah, do check that out, and we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back then. So, uh, thanks very much for everyone for watching, and see you again soon. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Oli. Bye.